Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa sallallahu ala Muhammad amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum So today I wanted to talk to you guys about the importance of learning new Arabic vocabulary through context Learning new Arabic vocabulary through context is so important for you to understand this in the beginning of your journey so later on you don't basically learn it the hard way like I did So what do I mean by learning Arabic through context? What I mean by it is you learn Arabic vocabulary through texts that are already prepared, whether it's in a book, whether it's, you know, simplified text like Arabi Ibn Aidik and books like those where there are simplified books and the level increases gradually or simply through, uh, through you know, transcribed conversations, whatever it might be, but it needs to be in context. Why do I say this? Because many words if you were to like for example sometimes there's people who ask to buy the the you know the the daftar tabid that we have in andalus institute which is basically the book where we have all the vocabulary in there and in the first few lessons is actually translated so some students they are not part of the institute and they say oh i just want those books so i can memorize those words but it doesn't work like that you actually need to to go over those words and that needs to be explained to you with the context that that word came in place right so for example and this is another reason why as well when you ask questions and there's many students who when they ask a question about the meaning of a particular word they say yeah ustad what does this mean and that's the wrong way of asking a question like for example what does qala mean what does qala yaqulu mean the right question on how to ask is, what does this word mean in this sentence, in this context? Because words will be, will have different meanings depending on context, right? So let me give you a, a, an example. There is a hadith that says, An uh, Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhuma qala ba'athani nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi haja fa ajnabtu falam ajid al ma. فتمرغت كما في الصعيد كما كما تمرغ الدابة ثم أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, صلى الله عليه وسلم فذكرت ذلك له فقال إنما كان يكفيك أن تقول بيديك هكذا ثم ضرب بيديه الأرض ضربة واحدة ثم مسح الشمال على اليمين وظاهر كفيه ووجهه متفق عليه واللفظ لمسلم so um, so he says he says as you guys see in the translation, and then he says, So we all agree, right? Who, for those of you who knows that qala yaqulu means to say, right? وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ right? So qala means to say. That's the default meaning, and that's what most, if you go Google Translate, is, is the most common meaning, right? However, here you can say, and as we mentioned in the previous video, you know. You basically take Arabic not from dictionaries. You take Arabic from uh, from the Arab, whether it's from their poetry, whether it's from their tadawin and their scripts, etc., to see how they use those words. So here in this hadith, you see the Prophet Sallallahu using the word qala to say to refer to do instead of to say. So so the hadith says that you know this sah uh, sahabi he was he was in state of Junub. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, oh, you didn't have to like roll on the floor and put all sand on you. But it was enough for you and taqul, right? For you to say, but it doesn't mean to say here. It means for you to do as such. And then he showed him how to do tayammu. Right? So he says, and taqul abiyadik. Now, here, if you in your mind put in your mind that qala yaqulu means to say and you read this hadith and he says so you're gonna say how can you say with your hands what does the Prophet mean how can I say to say with your hands how does that make any sense this must be a mistake this must and there's a bunch of shubhat that comes to your mind however if you learned Arabic vocabulary through context with a teacher that already knows 
he will explain to you. You will go over the hadith and you're going to say, okay, so here the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّمَا كَانَ يَكْفِيكَ أَن تَقُولَ بِيَدَيْكَ هَكَذَا So, إِنَّمَا مِنْ سَجْ كَانَ مِنْ سَجْ يَكْفِيكَ مِنْ سَجْ أَن تَقُولَ أَن تَقُولَ Here, it means to do. And then, boom, you go ahead, you write it down in your daftar al-tabid or in your notebook and you go ahead and memorize. And now, you have increased your... Arabic dictionary with a word that you already knew. You already knew what qala yakulu means, but now you you have a new context. You have a new context. All right, so hopefully this is, this is understood. I will give you guys another example. Um, and this comes with the importance of memorizing all different, uh, all different, all, all the different parts of the tasrif. What I mean by the tasrif is, for example, um, the verb da'a. Da'a yad'u ud'u. Da'wa, da'in, mad'u, right? That's the whole tasrif. He, he supplicated, he supplicates, um, supplicate the, the actual, you know, the actual uh, action of supplication. And then the one that supplicates the da'i, the fa'il, and then al mad'u, the thing that is being supplicated upon, right? So that's the whole tasrif. Now, what's going to happen is that many verbs, they have different masadir. They have different masadir, which is basically the name of the action, right? So da'a uh, yad'u, you're going to find if you go in the dictionary, da'a yad'u du'u, da'wa, right? So da'wa is used in the context of actually giving da'wa, but as well it could be used in the context of inviting someone to your house. Like, you know, you might tell someone, oh, I invite you, ad'uka ila al-bayt al I invite you to my house today. Wala yurfad da'wa. And an invitation cannot be, cannot be refused or rejected. So basically, you have to come, right? So that way it could be in different contexts. But if you first lend da'wah, as in the, the context of like calling people to Islam, which by the way, through translation, the meaning might change, like the actual, because da'wah literally translated would mean invitation. So you actually invite people to Islam. However, in English, we say calling people to Islam. So, so you know, da'wah is one master, but then you have dua, right? So dua is actually asking, asking Allah for such, right? So there are different, uh, different masadir. For the verb, for example, arafa, right? To know, arafa ya'rifu, i'rif, urfun, or irfun, and then you have Irfanun, and then you have Ma'rifa. So all of these different masadir, they are used in different context, right? So you need to learn this, not by going to the dictionary and saying, okay, what is all the masadir that there are for Arafah? And then memorize them. No, you don't do that. You wait until you come across that word in a text with a context and let your teacher explain you what that means. So you might come across a text and, and keep in mind, you might already know Arafah and you might know Ma'rifah only. You might know only that Masdar. Now let's, let's say you read in a text and you say, uh, And this that is not known except by people of Irfan. If you don't know that Irfan is the, ma the Masdar for Arafah as well, you will be stuck again. And now you have to go through the whole, uh, you know, the whole process of looking that word up on the dictionary. What does this mean? Oh, Irfan is the actual master of Arafah. Oh, I didn't know. So, so basically that's how you increase your, your Arabic mental dictionary. And it has to be through context. Otherwise you are going to get confused. Uh, the same with, for example, Beit, right? Beit, it means house, right? Beitun and the Jama. The plural is buyut, right? But as well, there is another jama with it, which is abiyat, abiyat, right? Now the Arab they used to use buyut for the jama for the plural of houses, and they would use abiyat for the actual lines of poetry. So it doesn't mean that abiyat doesn't mean houses as well, but the Arab didn't use it like that. And as we mentioned in the previous video. Al-kalamu huwa al-lafdu al-murakkab al-mufidu bil-wad'i. 
that al kalam the arabic speech the arabic is what al lafdu what comes out of your mouth al mufid it needs to make you know to have sense al murakkab it needs to be based on different uh, uh, words uh, and then it needs to be bil wada like it needs to be have been used by the actual arab and how they used it in the same context that they used it you cannot come today and say oh abiyat is technically is the plural of houses so i'm just going to use it for like houses but that's not how the arab used it does that make sense so make sure you learn arabic new arabic vocabulary through context through context in that context of course um as much as we would like to say yeah you can learn arabic by yourself to be honest with you you will always have as we mentioned in previous videos you will always need someone to refer back to whether he is teaching you you know actively or whether you are going through the thing and every time you get stuck you go and ask him which is of course not not what everybody is capable to do so so with this being said learn new arabic vocabulary through context and if you want you know a program that you know for sure that if you follow and that if you stick to it and that if you you know discipline yourself to complete it you are going to reach that level of fluency and and be fluent in the arabic language like an arab uh, i invite you to check out our program under this institute uh we have a program called arabic like an arab is a two year on average program you could take less it could take more depending on how much you put in is a self-paced program and we have a lot of support throughout uh throughout the process we have weekly conversational sessions uh that are live on the weekend for four hours and things like that so i invite you to check it out in the link in the description and um and yeah hopefully you benefited from this video see you guys in the next one assalamu alaikum